Hey, it's Dave Wyman, time for Football 101, and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, a couple of plays by the rookie, and it's decided. That was a great first-round draft choice by the Seahawks, choosing Jordan Brooks out of Texas Tech, and, and really, he hasn't played that much. He played 73% of the snaps against San Francisco. He played, uh, I think it was 77% versus the Giants, but most, mostly it's been like 40, 50%, and he's been incredibly productive. And he makes a tackle for a three-yard gain here. It doesn't sound super exciting, but what's exciting is this is the best blocking tight end in the league, George Kittle. They played the Niners the other day. Obviously, this is in the third quarter, 13-44. And this is just a, a little, you know, kind of a counter play here. And so, but what happens is he just flattens George Kittle and we'll take a look at it on film and makes the tackle. But here's how this play goes. Um, you get a block down here. You get a block down here, right there, which they did, you know, uh, center kicks back here. This guard pulls, okay, and, and here's the thing. Brooks reads this pull really well because he sees the block back here and that gets a, has a tendency to make you to step that way. But then he reads the guard who's now coming for Bobby Wagner. Okay, so he reads that really well and starts to shuffle over. Um, the fullback, check who KJ just in, obliterated earlier in the game, he is coming for him to block him, guards blocking him. And they have what's you know looks pretty good, especially since this is a matchup of, like I said, the best blocking tight end in the NFL, I believe, and a rookie. And so you'd think, hey, I'll take that matchup anytime if you're the Niners. So he comes off here and tries to block Jordan Brooks, and Jordan Brooks puts him flat on his tail just obliterates him, kills him, knocks him on his butt, and then comes over and makes the tackle on Jeff Wilson Jr. So just the, the way he read this, how physical he was, uh, it, it's just amazing. And this, you know, I'm doing this to kind of show the versatility because earlier in the season, and this will come into play because the Seahawks are playing the Rams in the playoffs. And this was a play from week 10, uh, LA Rams number one when they played at LA. Uh, second quarter, 258, and what this is, it ends up being a strip sack by uh, Jamal Adams, number 33, because he's going to blitz off the edge here. But, you know, a big problem for the Seahawks this year have been deep crossers, and that's really the responsibility of these guys inside. So what they do is they just max protect here. They block everybody up here, and they run two routes. You know, it's just a two-man route, one here and one here. And first of all, this one gets picked up by Quandre Diggs. But what happens with, um, with Brooks, and I've seen him do this a couple of times, where he drops back in like a back pedal, you know, and then he turns and runs towards the target right here. And he, you know, takes a great angle. What happens, and we'll see this on film, is that Goff is back here and he's looking to, to make that throw and he has to hold the ball because Jordan Brooks picks him up and he thinks, yeah, I better not throw that. So it gives just enough time for Jamal Adams to come off the edge and then I think he just swings his, his hand and bats the ball out and they get a strip sack. So directly caused by Jordan Brooks and I wanted to show this play because number one, we're playing the Rams in the playoffs obviously on Saturday, but also it's the versatility of Jordan Brooks. And I talked to him this week. Uh, we interviewed him on Tuesday. And uh, I said, you know, I don't think you guys played a lot of zone at Texas Tech. And he agreed. And he said usually he was up on the line, you know, shadowing the uh, quarterback, you know, spying him, man-to-man uh, -man coverage, that kind of thing, or he's blitzing. And there wasn't a lot of him dropping back into zones. And he's picked that up really well. So let's take a look at both those plays on film. All right, let's take a look at, uh, first of all, the play that uh, happened the other day in the Niner game. And again, here's the fullback. He's coming for KJ. Um, you get a block back here, a pull here for Bobby Wagner. Block down, block down. And here's the guy that's coming for Jordan Brooks. And that's George Kittle right there. And it's just going to be a little, you know, counter action that the running back's going to try to run up inside there. So here you see, this is the fullback here on, on KJ. It looks like DJ Reed's running in here to, to you know, help out. Um, Bobby Wagner taking on this offensive lineman right here. And then <laughs> here's the collision. I love this. Uh, the collision by Jordan Brooks. And you can see right there that, yeah, Kittle is starting to fall backwards. But it's just, 
it's not like he came up and just, you know, blasted him or anything. He just ran towards him and he just has a power about him. And, you know, obviously his hips are lower than him. Low man wins in the NFL and Jordan Brooks wins on this one. Again, against a really good blocker. And then here, not only that, not only does he take Kittle out, who's laying on the ground there, but also he makes the tackle right there. And you can see him get up and feeling pretty good about himself, the rookie, and he should. All right, here, here we go back to week 10. And again, you're just going to get a two-man route. They just max protect all of these guys. Stay in and block, including the running back. And you're going to get a crosser here, which is Gerald Everett, the tight end. who They have good tight ends, Higby and Gerald Everett. And I thought that they did a great job of neutralizing them the last time they played. And then the receiver you can't see is crossing this way, and he'll get picked up by Quandre Diggs. But we'll just see the progression and the recognition by the rookie. Really good. So like I said on, on the chalkboard, um, Brooks starts to backpedal, but then he turns towards the inside. He knows that this guy is coming. So he looks him up, and we did this earlier in the year after the first Arizona game where he picked up a tight end, a deep crosser, and I don't remember if he knocked the ball down, but he was there to cause the incompletion anyway. And now you can see that Brooks is in just a dead sprint for him. And this is, you can see right here, I mean, there's nobody else he's looking for. There's only two guys, the other guy's out of the picture. Jer Jared Goff's looking right there. That's who he wants to throw to. And I think 56 flashes and, you know, he just holds the ball. And now you can see coming off the edge is Jamal Adams. And it just gives him enough time because if the ball comes out right now, like he wanted it to, it would have been off. There wouldn't have been a sack, wouldn't have been a strip sack. They end up getting the, the ball, the Seahawks did. And here we go. There's the, I think he, he took a big swing of his arm, Jamal Adams. The ball is out right there. And then you can see just Jordan Brooks' feet right there. But there's nowhere to go for Jared Goff. Again, there's a little check down here. I think that this is the running back, but it's too late. Jamal Adams already got to him. Football 101 is brought to you by Heritage Distilling Company, makers of BSB Brown Sugar Bourbon.